This evening, oh, welcome to uh, fellow Toastmasters and uh, welcome guests. Uh, this evening, I'm going to be talking to you about four aspects of my life that shaped who I am today. Number one, I was born in February 1967 in Pensacola, Florida at Pensacola Hospital, and I broke the, the hospital record as the biggest baby ever born to date. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in at only 12 pounds and 7 ounces. Oh my so, God. so, as you can see, even as an infant, I can break records. <laughs> <laughs> the second big event that affected my life was growing up with my mom and my two brothers, is that my mom had this, this love to travel. She was, usually did not have very much money, however, whenever she did, she would want to go on a road trip somewhere. We would go down to, say, Key West, Florida to visit family, Jacksonville, or even up to Tennessee to visit my, uh, my, my father's family. We even went as far as Kansas City, Missouri, and even did things like go diamond mine, mining in Little Rock, Arkansas, or doing ruby mining in North Carolina. So I, growing up, I got a huge love for travel. So when I graduated high school, I still want to continue that love for travel. So for the next five years of my life, I decided I wanted to travel the world. So I joined the U.S. Navy. <laughs> uh, well, in the Navy, I, got, I was lucky. I was stationed overseas in Yokosuka, uh, Japan, for four years. Mm. And I ended up seeing 10 countries. The last cruise that I was on was an Australian cruise one month before actually getting out, coming back to the U.S. So I was able to see multiple continents and multiple countries. After that, the third milestone in my life came when I was actually in grad school in 1994 and 1995. This was outside of a town called Tallahassee, Florida. There's a small town called Quincy, Florida that is just uh, neighboring to that town. One day I was actually just driving around Quincy and I noticed one road was blocked off and there was a, a small independent film being go going on. So I decided, you know what, let me see what's going on here. And I was able to get on that, uh, that production, working as a production assistant and sometimes as an, ec as an extra for the film. One of the things I found out was that, uh, working on the film, was that I actually got bit by that film bug, where I just <laughs> loved the creativity of being on film. <laughs> However, the one thing I did not like, I did not like being in front of the camera. <laughs> I, did not want to be, I did not want to have lights. <laughs> the second thing was, I did not want to be behind the camera either, hanging lights, hanging fixtures, you know, doing all this stuff, because you'd be doing that for two, three, four months at a time, it's just going to be boring. So I decided I would do something different. I decided I would go into the stunt business. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember one day sitting at a Chinese restaurant uh, in, in Tallahassee, Florida, and I was thinking to myself, you know what, if I want to be in the stunt industry, one of the things I could uh, choose to do for myself to prove that I can do it is to see if I could jump out of an airplane. <laughs> so the following day, I jumped out of an airplane. Obviously, I survived, and I've had 19 jumps since then. <laughs> while, uh, while training for the stunt business, I realized, or in Tallahassee, I realized, number one, I did not have a mentor. I did not have special trainings or anything. So what is a person to do? So I decided I would go out on the internet, and I'll buy a book on how to be a stunt man. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought this book and learned, started learning some important uh, techniques. One of the things they teach you in this book is, what is your resume like? So I decided to make myself more apt to be able to do these stunts would be to have a wide diversity of things. So I started whitewater rafting. I started scuba diving. I continued doing skydiving. I took fencing classes. I took martial arts classes. So I was teaching myself to build my resume. In those three years that I was still in Florida, I got zero gigs. <laughs> <laughs> However, that didn't, that didn't fret me. Uh, later on, I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina, started doing more training, got on some actual uh, stage productions and was able to get some good training. And to, in, in the year 2000, um, I ended up moving to uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, where I started training with a stunt troupe uh, called Studio F, where we were doing all kinds of different independent films. Shortly after training with these people, I became a stunt uh, assistant stunt coordinator and also working uh, as a stunt safety. Shortly after that, I started doing my own stunt coordinating for film and also doing fight choreography for stage. I worked on Hamlet, the Scottish play, if you don't know what that one is, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Romeo and Juliet. What I learned about doing the, the film stuff is all about creativity, creating something unique for the audience to enjoy that they, that they could be intrigued as, as well as be entertained. So to tell you something that's hilarious, I want to actually go into my conclusion. <laughs> In conclusion, 
when I was born, I realized I could break records. Just being the biggest baby, that was number one, I could always break a new record. Number two was my love for travel. Seeing other cultures, living in other, other cultures, appreciating other people was huge for me. Number three was the adventures that I create for myself by wanting to go into the stunt business, by going out and trying and, and doing new things. And number four, about creativity. What I do now in my real estate business, I, I do think outside of the box and is able to use the creativity that I learned from being in the stunt business to do more things. So that's it.